Greetings in Jesus' name. I uh, wanted to hop on here and um, start off by saying I think what I want to do is start a kind of a Q and A list of uh, videos, and I think a Q and A would be really good. So far, many questions have been coming my way. Uh, some of them I try to answer online. I realize that's not necessarily helpful to other people who aren't reading the comments. and It's time consuming because um, I end up repeating myself a lot. So I thought what I would do is I would start Q&A. And um, there are several different um, places down here in, in um, YouTube down below where you can see that I have a, a bunch of revelation and um, fig tree and uh, Matthew um, videos and uh, all this kind of thing. Many questions are coming across that are about things like um, uh, Babylon and Mystery Babylon, the two witnesses. Many of those, um, many challenge whether or not there is a seven year tribulation or whether it's um, only three and a half years of great tribulation and not seven years. There, and there's some great questions. And uh, a lot of these are already answered. And uh, those Bible studies tend to be about an hour long. They were home Bible studies. Um, and uh, we recorded them. There's, there are some questions very often from um, the home audience there. And uh, so I, I see uh, up in my window up here, I can see a, a, a kitty cat in the window. She wants in. And she wants in, she wants in, and she rattles the screen door to let me know that she's there and she wants in. So give me just a moment. She disappeared. She's probably waiting at the front door off to the side over there is the front door. So let me step around over there and let her in. I will be right back. This particular one is Skittle. Started off as my daughter's cat, and she adopted me. So anyway, she's hungry, so she's irritated, if you can see by her ears because she wanted to come in and eat, and there's food over here, so I'm going to let her go and go eat. Uh, we've got several kitty cats around here. We've got two dogs. We have, I don't know, must be about a dozen chickens. So we got animals. We have a small small farm around here, so we try to keep it relaxed and um, live in the country. And uh, so we, we, uh, we, we love our animals. We've got another kitty cat in the neighborhood that we've kind of adopted, and he's gray. And he shows up at the door once in a while looking really skin, skinny and frail and looking for food. So give him a little dish of food. He's gray, looks pitiful. So we named him Earl because he's Earl Gray. So anyway, um, <coughs> excuse me. So um, I just want to um, gently try to answer some of those questions. Uh, understand that, that when, I, when I answer these, uh, I'm, most of the time, this, I'm not shooting in the dark. Um, I've studied this for a number of years. Now, some of the videos that were the, the biggest about the, the whole question of 2023 to 2030 and the calendar and questions and things, it's questions about software and some intersecting dates that um, I've been curious about and I was asking questions on. And some of you have had some really good insights into some of those. It's awesome. But, um, I, I'm, and I'm asking. I'm not setting any dates. I'm not fixing any dates. I'm, <coughs> excuse me. I'm always watching and waiting on the Lord. Um, and uh, uh, the date I want the Lord to come back would be um, today, whenever today is, today. So, um, but when it comes to some of these questions, um, um, some people can pop on here and be really cond condescending and pop in and say, well, you know, you're just way off. You're way off. You really need to reset your Bible. Because that, that's not even close. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll go and look at the profile and I'll see, you know, a youngster on here and I'll know that, well, we're, you know, it doesn't, doesn't mean that they're ignorant or anything like that. But um, it's entirely possible or probable that I've been studying it a little bit longer. Um, I can change my mind on some things and I've changed my mind on a number of things, um, like how the very end wraps up and, and, the um, new heaven and new earth, exactly how that happens and the timing of that. Um, th there are a few things I've changed my mind on. 
I changed my mind on the timing of the two witnesses. Um, I used to just, just because I, I grew up over the years with um, Grace to You and Dr. John MacArthur and his study Bible and his timelines and things. I, I've never discussed this with him at all. Um, and now I'm not even in that part of the country to go and walk into his office or anything like that and, and talk to him about it. But, um, you know, in his timeline, he's got the two witnesses because they come on the scene where they do in the middle of the book of Revelation. That's where they enter the scene. That's where their ministry starts and he has them going on to the end. And I, I've changed my mind on on that for a number of reasons. And um, for me, they just don't, it just doesn't work. It doesn't line up properly. And there's some logic issues that I go into on, on a couple of two or three videos on the two witnesses. So um, please go and ex explore those, watch those. Um, before you come in condescending and telling me what an idiot I am and I don't know what I'm talking about. And um, uh, some people pop in here and they're really condescending and say, you pre-trade people, you don't know what you're talking about. Hey, you know, you pre-millennials, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I've heard it all. Um, and, and people are going to be rude, I guess. But I'm probably going to block you if you keep plopping in and, you, and I politely try to answer your question and say, well, you know, I believe this for this reason here because of these verses. And if, if you keep being rude to me and telling me what an idiot I am or whatever, you're very condescending, um, I'm probably going to um, you know, just nuke your response. And then if you're really, really rude and all you're doing is being disruptive, I'm probably going to just block you entirely. So um, don't, don't do that. If, if it's a one-way conversation and it's you machine gunning at me or shotgunning toward me and there's not some good two-way conversation, then then it's over. Um, a lot of times what will happen is there will be some verses as a response that are um, a bunch of disassociated verses that aren't necessarily on the same topic. And um, a, a lot of times there are a lot of symbolism read into it. Um, the two witnesses, you know, I, I the two witnesses, I, two witnesses are the church and the word of God. I kid you not. It's the church and the word of God. And, and the fire coming out of their mouths is the power of the Word of God. If you start applying all kinds of symbolism to all of these passages in the Bible, um, for me, it's a non-starter. The, the hermeneutics that I appreciate, that I learned, and that works for me in every other aspect of Scripture is as literal and direct and normal as possible. And uh, otherwise, you know, it's, it's uh, what's the point? You can guess at anything. Um, the two witnesses are my car and my wife's car. And the fire is when I try to start it up. And sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes what happens is, is it'll backfire and a fire will come out the tailpipe. That's the two witnesses. I mean, I'm using absurdity, but it can be anything. If, if you want to start applying all this symbolism to things, you've got to have biblical precedent for why it's, it's that way. You better be able to show me um, in the scripture, particularly in the Old Testament, probably Ezekiel, Daniel, somewhere, where you're rightly dividing the word of truth and you've got good reason for saying this right here looks like the two witnesses. Um, for me, I see the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, Jesus told the disciples, hey, some of you here, you know, you're not going to all die before you see. Okay, and then he gives them this Mount of Transfiguration and it's about the end and who's there? You know, so uh, I see, I, to me, that's what Jesus was giving them a glimpse of with the two witnesses. Um, sometimes people are the two witnesses as a couple of organizations. Um, and, and, and that's not necessarily what the language says. So I'll answer that. I'll get into that more. There are some, already some videos I've already responded to on the two witnesses. But um, I want to do some Q&A things. One of, the, one of the things I want to answer right now is I'm, I'm getting hammered a lot by certain groups who try to tell me how evil it is and how wrong it is and how it's heresy to talk about um, you know, escaping and how we shouldn't be looking to escape and that kind of stuff. Friends, I, I just want to say, <clears throat> for me, this could be question one um, about escape. Let's, uh, let, let me just do this real quick. In Revelation chapter 3, I, I turned this on, the red letter edition. I turned this on because, uh, you know, I know the Word of God is the Word of God. And it's all the word of God, no matter what. But just to show who the quote is and how it's not just, you know, um, John misunderstanding what the Lord's saying or whatever. 
John is by dictation writing down seven letters to seven churches. This is fascinating because a lot of times we wonder, why didn't Jesus write any of the Bible? This is as close to it as you get. I mean, he is the author overall. He's the author with many writers, you know, 40 writers or whatever in the scripture. Holy Spirit, inspired by the Holy Spirit, um, inspired by God. God breathed. Our Bible is God breathed. But as far as Jesus himself directly writing scripture down, we've got it right here in um, the warnings to the seven churches. And uh, so he literally is telling John, when you go back into um, the beginning of each church, it's like this, to the faithful church, okay? And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? So he's saying, basically, John, write this down. Take this down. Got a pen? Take this down. Now, the angel, angel just means messenger. A lot of people will read a lot more into that than uh, needs to be there. So it says messenger. So it's messenger or angel. Um, it's the pastor. We don't have precedence, in my opinion, and I'm not solid on this. And when I'm not solid on something, I'll let you know. But I don't find precedence in Scripture at all for God um, speaking to um, the medium of angels to different churches. Like we don't have that to Corinth, to letter Corinth, or uh, Thessalonians. Um, you know, John doesn't do any of this, or whatever. And and why would he? He seems to be in a lot of these letters holding the angel, the pastor, the messenger responsible for these um, messages. And, you know, when he's shaking his finger, I'm telling you, I'm in trouble. It's not just to that church, but to that messenger, that angel. And the angel would be sitting there going, what do I do? <laughs> you know, um, don't shoot the messenger, you know, literally, because they're the messenger. Um, they're delivering the message. Um, but here's, here's what's going on is that when the word of God was distributed, disseminated throughout the world, scribes would copy it um, verbatim. If they made a mistake, you've probably heard this story before. If they made a mistake, then typically they would throw the whole thing out and start all over, back to page one. Um, if they would, used to call it in the movie industry, it's like a page one rewrite. Somewhat like that. So they would go back and begin at the beginning and start all over. Except here they're just they're copying. It's not just creating from nothing. It's copying. They're going to try to make sure it's exact. Some scribes did take liberties. And we can tell because we have so many copies. So many copies of, of um, the ancient documents that we can tell the ones that um, look a little funny. So that's why sometimes you'll read a Bible and go, what, what happened to this verse? This verse is missing. Well, you go back to the oldest manuscripts, and there are thousands of copies of these. If it's not in any of the thousands of copies of these, um, and it just pops up kind of with just one um, set of um, text, Greek text, and you know that somebody, some scribe probably got carried away somewhere. Um, we we got to know the Word of God is is uh, regularly under attack. So um, take a look here. So I apologize if sometimes I take too long and sometimes I get chatty and I get too folksy and I and I full of hot air and I just run on and I apologize for that in advance. But I don't want there to be buried. I want you to see where my heart is and where I'm coming from in here. Um, I'm careful when I'm looking at scripture and um, I, I think we need to be honest with it, look at it. And if we're going to diverge from just a straightforward, normal reading of the text, we ought to have a really good reason. Not going to all the symbolism and kind of pull some things out of our hat or um, go to the Old Testament and pull some things out that are unrelated. You know, I, I think that, you know, the two witnesses are um, the, the two pillars that were in the temple that, no, no, come on, give me good precedence for understanding it that way. Don't just make stuff up, okay, because you need to try to make it go in to fit this idea that you have, Um that's called eisegesis, and that's where you're reading into the text. You're putting things in the text that aren't there. That's like newspa newspaper exegesis is what sometimes people will call um, looking at end times prophecies and what's going on in the world. You could do that, and you could try to jam some things in there, and people do that regularly. Um, you know, you're trying to look at the Bible. It says this, and New York is really evil, and there's this going on, and Obama signed this metal beam, and so that's the agreement, and... and uh, New York City is Babylon. No, 
I mean, I'm sorry, no, but you know, but people do that. Um, there's, the United States is not not um, in the scriptures in any any broad sense. Generally, when it talks about the world and the world system, yes, the Babylonian system eventually will encompass the whole world. So it'll be the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, you know, including Hawaii. It'll, it'll include Jerusalem. It'll include everything. Eventually, Africa, because it'll be the Antichrist global system. But when you read about Babylon in the end times, it mentions the Euphrates River, and it mentions near the Chaldees. It mentions in the Chaldean Desert. So there's no Chaldean Desert in New York or in the United States, and the Euphrates River, last I saw, does not run through the United States. It's very specific in the Old Testament prophecies, too. So uh, it will be a global system, and it will affect the rest of the world, and the world will fall into line, but the, but the United States itself is not Babylon. Um, Jerusalem itself is not Babylon. Will they have an HQ, a headquarters, um, a satellite office in New York? Probably. I would say, I'd be surprised if they didn't, right? It might be one of their biggest ones. They might convert the UN, okay? Um, so we don't want to read into Scripture, though, something that's not, not going on. Um, I'm getting texts who about the Antichrist. The Antichrist, I'm getting a lot. A lot of people want to fall in, um, align into line with a couple of Bible teachers out there right now, big famous Bible teachers and authors who are saying um, the Antichrist is probably going to be Muslim. Well, most of the Jews I speak to or read from say, no, that's not going to happen. That's a non-starter. There's some biblical reasons too that we can look at, and I have done some studies in that. When you're getting to uh, one of the later sessions in the book of Revelation where it, you know, it tells you what chapter you can go to um, and you can listen to those. And um, But I actually did some legwork, wrote letters, wrote emails, what have you, to some rabbis. And I wrote to some in Israel. Yes, they're, um, you know, most of them are unbelievers. But this, these unbelieving rabbis are going to be the ones that are going to be certifying the Antichrist when he comes. And um, telling everybody, yeah, this is the dude. And he does have to go through the certification process. That is their expectation. Is it biblical? A lot of things aren't biblical. The temple over there, when it gets built, is that going to be biblical? Well, no. The church is the body of Christ as the temple. Now our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, but we're talking unbelievers and what they're going to do and what they are looking for, okay? So in communicating with these rabbis and asking them, well, what are you looking for in your, in your Messiah? When he's coming, what is it? What are the, the things you're looking for? They they commonly will mention three things. One, absolutely must be um, of the tribe of Judah. Has to be. It's a must. Well, that eliminates all the Muslims, right? Also, must be of the line of King David. Well, that further eliminates the all the Muslims. And the third thing they're looking for is he will build our temple. He's got to give us our temple. So those are the three things that they all have in common that they say they're looking for in their Messiah. Uh, it's not strict enough. I mean, there's, there are a lot of qualifications in the Old Testament for the Messiah, and Jesus Christ fulfilled them all, down to, to being born in Bethlehem and all of these things that uh, they just completely whew, miss because it's not convenient to remember those things right now. So, But those are the three things that they are looking for, um, and so that leaves Muslims out of the equation. You're not going to get all those rabbis over there and the priesthood and so forth to certify a Muslim or any Gentile as uh, as the Messiah, okay? Um, they're going to completely fall for a false Messiah, but he, no one's going to no one's going to buy into that. Somebody, somebody from uh, a Gentile nation coming in and being the Messiah. So, um, so those are some examples that what I what I mean is is um, I try to do some research and answer these, and I'm not just guessing at things. So I'd like a little credit, and please don't be condescending. Uh, if you have better information and you can give me some quotes, great. Sometimes I have people who, who um, they claim to have a source and, no, I heard this. Um, great. If you could cite that for me, I'll, I'll research it. I'll look into it. It might be accurate. It might not be, but I want to qualify that. I want to look into that. You're a complete stranger um, and you're trying to tell me, no, I've done all this research and I know for a fact that this right here is the case and this is the way to understand this verse. Well, super. I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know you. I, I will look at scripture. And that's exegesis. Eisegesis is reading into the text 
what is not there, but you're reading into it. And that's like newspaper exegesis where you're reading into prophecies like America is Babylon, that type of thing. But the proper way to do it is to exegete scripture. You research it, you want to get the meaning out of it. You want to get the author's intent out of it. You want to look at the history behind the text that you're looking at. You can apply logic. Logic is perfectly valid for understanding scripture. You want to cross-reference other scriptures. You want to go look at the original languages and how those words or phrases are used elsewhere in the Bible. And I'm, I'm just telling you that because that I want you to know two things. One is, I hope you do that. You know, I learn to do that. And two, I want you to know that how I try to be really thorough with what I'm doing, okay? So back to this question then that I get from people and there's stupid people. You know, I've had people just come just short of telling me I'm going to hell for giving all these people false hope and for you know, all you pre-trib people trying to say that you're going to escape all this time of tribulation upon the earth and all that. And there's no not one verse in the whole Bible that says that. Well, you, there are several. I could go into First Thessalonians chapter 4 and chapter 5. We could go into that. Chapter 1, too, the last verse. You know, and I will have a video where I'm going to go into that. And I also want to do a Q&A, too, on um, not just on the wrath of God, but I also want to look at um, different terms for the day of the Lord and look at a little bit of Joel and other passages and see is it only just one day? I believe I believe it is one day, one single day, ultimately, when Jesus sets his foot down on the Mount of Olives or whatever, when he returns that day. Everything's going to culminate to that one day, but the day is also an era. It's a segment of time that's not one 24-hour day. Because if you look at the number of events and things that have to happen and the order of events and protract it out, it's a lot longer in duration than a 24-hour day could handle. So it's an era. We do that, right? Well, sometimes we'll talk about, you know, um, when we went to high school or something. Well, back in the day, you know, we had to wear tennis shoes on the basketball court. And if you were on the basketball court in your street shoes, boy, that coach would have your hide. You talk about that back in the day. We were talking about an era. You're not talking about one day, although you probably might have your mind focused on one particular day when that coach jumped on somebody. Maybe it was you. But we, we use idioms like that somewhat too. Well, um, using hyperbole, hyperbole, hyperbolic language, uh, exaggerative language to make a point um, is quite common in Hebrew, um, in the Hebrew language in writing and speaking. So, You've got to know when to apply that and when not to. So you have to be very careful reading the text. You've got to let the, the context, the, the entire passage where you're at, determine the meaning. So let's take a look here real quick because I've already, I'm blathering on too long here. And I'm already get, getting ready to run into like 30 minutes or some ridiculous thing. So um, so look at this. Is, I, I put this red letter here just so you know that John's not saying this and I'm not saying this. Jesus is saying this, okay? These things says he who is holy, he who is true. He who has the key of David. He who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I hope you realize that's Jesus Christ, right? I know your works. See, I set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. So this is a faithful church. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. They're talking about the Judaizers, right? Indeed, I will make them Come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Now listen to this. This is important. Um, because you've kept my command to persevere, I also will I will keep you from the hour of trial. Now it's a little 60-minute hour. Probably not, right? It probably means a time, a duration. It's like saying the day of the Lord, an hour of trial. Okay? And we know it's not just 60 minutes because, you know, um, the things that are going to happen, we know, are going to take more than one hour to take place. Okay, So this is what I mean about these idioms you have to look at and apply. Um, and so he says, I will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world. So it's going to come upon the whole world, not just Jerusalem. Um, you know, not just New York, New York, not just name it down, not just Babylon. It's going to come upon the whole world to test who? Those who dwell on the earth. That's pretty much everybody, right? But at the same time, he says, I also will keep you from 
the hour of trial to test those who dwell on their whole earth. So riddle me this, Batman. Pardon the cultural reference. How's it going to keep us from that? If it's going to be on the whole world and it's to test those who dwell on the earth, how is that going to happen? Um, now we can we can do this. That was New King James. We can look at the um, oh, pick a version NASB just for the sake of of getting some examples. And this is how we should study. Um, this is how we should do it. Because you've kept my word of uh, perseverance, I will also keep you from the hour of testing, that hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. Pretty much says the same thing. If you want another version, you should just you should keep looking. Some of these you should avoid. I, I would avoid, you know, a lot of these versions on here. Um, New Living Translation, not Living Bible. This is the New Living Translation. Let's look at this for grants, just to get it from another, another flavor. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. Now, that's an interesting spin, and that's clear, cool, right? Um, I'll let you know that the thrust of the text, which the Greek does agree with, is, is that it's going to test those who are left here on the earth because they belong on the earth, but it, uh, it's going to test those earth dwellers. You can look at another version on here. A lot of people say, I like the King James Version. It's the authorized version. Well, authorized by King James, not by God, but that's okay. Um, because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. Ah, same, same type of flavor, who belong to this world. Um, so Jesus himself is the one who's promising to, to keep people out. Now in the Greek, um, and we can pull up a Greek version on here, but I'd like you to do it yourself, is um, terio ek. And I pulled this slide up before in studying this. Terio ek, it means I'm going to keep you completely and totally out of the question, out of the way, removed utterly from all of this. You're not going to go through it, but be saved through it like Noah was in the ark. You're not going to be in the middle of it and then taken out and removed before bad things happen or whatever. No, it's it's utterly and completely and totally kept out. There are different ways they would say um, those things that I just described. But Terio Ek means, um, you know, there's a train coming down the railroad tracks and I'm just going to, way before it even gets here, I'm just going to get you completely out of the way and remove you completely from the question at all. You're not even going to be uh, part of the equation here with that. So th I want to do these Q&As like this. I'll, I'll try to do them shorter, I promise. But I get, you know, I get, I get a little wordy sometimes. Because I want you to understand my heart again and I want you to understand what my way of thinking is. And if there's something wrong with my way of thinking or whatever, then I'm sorry, folks can disagree. Um, but I, I want you to know that and to appreciate, I hope, that um, I'm, I try to be very thorough in, in looking at things and looking at the background, look at the original language, um, look at it from different translations, that type of thing. Okay. So anyway, I hope you, um, I hope this has been helpful. This is one of hopefully many Q&As that I'm going to do. And um, subscribe, please, like, and um, that way as I put more up, I've got an ongoing, I'm, I'm still doing some on um, Matthew, the Olivet Discourse, okay, and I'm getting ready to finish up chapter 24, but chapter 25, where we go into the 10, wit the ten virgins, um, 10 witnesses, I guess kind of, the 10 virgins, uh, that's part of the Olivet Discourse. Not many people don't notice that, but it's chapter 24, chapter 25, that's all the same talk Jesus is giving up there on the mountain. So anyway, I'm, gonna, I'm getting ready to flow into that. So anyway, so you, you can keep updated if you like. Um, pass the word on, share this, please, and um, like it, and please subscribe. And um, and I, I'd like to hear more questions from you if they, you have them, and I'm just going to try to be honest and answer. I'll do the best I can. If I don't have the answer, I, I will... Um, I'll look and I'll dig it up and I'll let you know that, well, I wasn't real sure, but this is what I found and here's my sources, okay? God bless.